Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video we are going to build this dashboard using tkinter. So this dashboard will use tkinter to create this interface, this window with the sidebar and the charts inside it. The charts themselves will be created using matplotlib which is a very popular python library for data visualization. The use case in this case is going to be for a sample shop. They have some sales, some inventory, some product details and what they want to do is to create charts based on their data to generate this visualization dashboard with tkinter. This project is definitely beginner friendly. You don't need to have any experience with either tkinter or matplotlib. If you do have some experience with either of those, then great, this will really help you. But even if you don't, you can definitely get this project going. The source code will be in the description as always. I will break down every single line of code step by step. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's first start by talking a bit about some setup. This is how my project folder looks like. I named it tkinter dashboard. You can name it anything you want. Inside it, I have two main files. I have dashboard.py and data.py. One thing I have to mention is I'm using VS Code. You can use any editor that you like, so long as you're comfortable with it and you're able to run Python. All right, so what are these two files that I have? data.py will house all of my dummy data. So here I have my sales data, inventory data, and so on. So we'll talk about those as we go through the project. But basically, this is where I'm putting my data in this Python file. You can choose to have your data inside a JSON file, inside a CSV file. But for simplicity's sake, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it inside a Python file called data.py. Now, the second file is dashboard.py. This is where we're going to write the code for the dashboard. This is where we'll produce the charts, add them in tkinter, and everything else. All right, so how does this dashboard.py look like for now? For now, it's just a bunch of imports. I'll go through them in just a second. But before that, one thing I want you to do is to actually install matplotlib. To install matplotlib, what you need to do is simply pull up a terminal. So I'm using the integrated terminal in VS Code. You can use any terminal. You can use the regular CMD on your machine. It doesn't matter. In my case, I prefer using the integrated terminal, so I'll use that. So I just have to say pip install matplotlib and it's that easy. You just wait a minute and everything should get installed and you should have it on your machine ready to go. So I'm not going to do this because obviously I already have it, but essentially this is how you install it. Now regarding these imports, so inside data.py, you notice we just have some variables. We have the sales underscore data, inventory underscore data, product data, sales year data, and inventory month data. So we don't really have any code that is executing anything. Obviously this is also being executed. This information is being added into those variables, but that's all we have. So we just have variables containing our data. In this case, this is just some dummy data. I use ChatGPT to generate it. So this is a really interesting use case of ChatGPT. Make sure you can use it to generate any kind of data that you want. So in dashboard.py, I just say import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. So this is a common way to refer to matplotlib. We import it as plt, standard. And the next thing is from data. So here I'm saying from the data.py file, I'm importing all these variables containing my dummy data. So this should be straightforward. I'm importing sales data, inventory data, and everything else. All right, so now I have my imports. I have matplotlib installed. The first thing we're going to work on after we have set up everything like we just did, first thing we'll do is to actually create the plots. So let's totally forget about tkinter for now, forget about the dashboard, forget about anything related to tkinter. Let's just work on matplotlib and creating these plots ourselves. So first things first, I'm going to change the color scheme of matplotlib. So matplotlib has some default colors that it usually works with, but in our case, what we want to do is we want to have a uniform color scheme for all our charts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to be this few shades of purple. You can see right here, there are five different shades of purple. I'm going to set this as my color scheme. To set this as my color scheme, I use the RC params from matplotlib and I set this like so. So I specify the color attribute and I give it this list of five different purple shades. You can choose any number of shades that you want. You can have five different red shades or yellow shades or whatever you want. You can even choose to keep the default matplotlib colors, but I chose to do this so that we have a much better looking interface when we combine all of these plots together. 
All right, so we have the colors. Let's start by actually plotting these charts. The first chart we're going to plot is going to be related to this one, the sales data. In this case, let's take a look at our data. You can see we have product A, it has 100 sales, product B has 200 sales, product C has 600 sales, and so on. What we want to do is to plot a bar graph or a bar chart for this data. So this is very straightforward in matplotlib and you will see that once we know how to plot the first or the first and the second charts, everything else will come super easy. It's very similar. So let's plot the first chart. So we're going to say chart one is going to be bar chart of sales data. First things first, we have to do plt.subplots. This will create the figure and the subplots object. So in this case, this returns two things. Figure one, or fig one in this case, is going to be our figure. This is going to be the general figure produced by matplotlib. And ax one will represent the axes. And this will be inside the figure, which will contain our data and the way it is formatted. So, okay, we created plt.subplots, but how do I make this into a bar chart? To make this into a bar chart, it's very easy. I just say ax1 or axes1.bar. So bar will help me create a bar chart. And then I have to specify the variables. So in this case, the X axis will contain the sales data dot keys and the Y axis will contain the sales data dot values. So what do I mean by keys and values? Going back to our sales data, you can notice that this is a Python dict. A Python dict is a dictionary in Python. You are probably familiar with it, but basically what we're saying is these are sets of key value pairs. So product A is a key, and 100 is the value. And in this case, product B is the key and 200 is the value. So when I say sales data dot keys, basically this is going to be product A, product B, product C, product D, and product E. So basically we just extracted all of the keys. And when I say sales data dot values here on the Y axis, this will get me all the data on the Y axis. So this will be 100, 200, 300, whatever. So the data that you see here, the numbers. Okay, so we have the data, we placed them in the bar chart. So the next thing we're going to do is we will set the title of the chart. This is going to be sales by product or whatever you want to call it, but I chose to call it sales by product. The next thing we're going to set the labels on both the X and the Y axis. So this will be set X label product and set Y label sales. And finally, I just have to show my plot. So this will be plt.show. If you don't run the plt.show, you will not really see anything produced by matplotlib. This is just how matplotlib works. So you should be acquainted with this type of syntax. Okay, so we have created everything related to the bar chart. What's left is to actually just run it. So running it, we see we have a bar chart produced. As you can see, the title says sales by product just how we specified here and the x label says product and the y label says sales so this is the point of using this x label and y label and as you can see we have a bar chart produced so you have here the product a with 100 product b 200 and all the values are matching according to our sales data variable in python so we have totally finished producing our very first chart this is a bar chart now the second chart is related to the inventory data. So you can see here we have this inventory data. It's very similar to the sales data, but in this case, we're kind of referring to quantities. So before we were saying that product A had 100 sales. In this case, product A had 150 units in inventory, meaning we had 150 units of product A. Again, this is just dummy data. You can create any data that you want. You can replace this with any type of data that you want, especially if you have your own use case. All right, so we have the inventory data. We're also going to create a bar chart, but this time it's going to be a horizontal bar chart. So to create the horizontal bar chart, it's also very similar. So we say figure two axis two is equal to plt.subplot, so the exact same thing. Next, I say ax2.bar h. So bar h means horizontal bar chart. This is how we create the bar chart horizontally. And then we say list inventory data dot keys and then inventory data dot values. The reason I specify it here as a list because bar h has to take a list object. So here inventory dot keys, this will return a dict keys object. What we want to do is simply convert it into a list object. All right, so I've passed the data, I've created the bar chart. 
Next thing I want, I set the title. This will be inventory by product. And then I set the X label to inventory, the Y label to product, and, and then I just plt.show. So it's the exact same thing that we did for the first chart. Very similar, we just changed a few things when creating the chart, but the rest of the code is pretty much the same. Now running it, so you see first we have our first chart, which was the sales by product. All I have to do is simply press on X and now I have the inventory by product, which is our second chart. And this is how our second chart looks like. As you can see, we have everything there and it has all of our data and it's a horizontal bar chart. Okay, so we finished our first two charts. Now we just have three more. The next one is going to be a pie chart. So going back here, you see we have our product data. In this case, this is a pie chart and we have these five products and there's a percentage of each of them. So what we want to do is to generate the pie chart. To do that, very easy, let me just scroll down a bit. And we, again, we create plt.subplots. In this case, this will be figure three, axis three. And then we say ax3.py. So in this case, the it's a pie chart. And we will have the product data dot values and then the labels will be equal to the product data dot keys. So product data values are the numbers here. So 10, 40, 30, whatever. And then the labels, so the labels of the pie chart, I'll explain more when we run it. And this is going to be basically the keys. So A, B, C, D, and E. So we set the title and then we just do plt.show. Running it, let's close the first two this one as well and as you can see here this is our third chart which is the pie chart so the labels that we set here as okay let me show you labels is equal to product data dot keys this is actually these guys so the letters here these are the labels of the pie chart they're here to label the data now one thing we could have added is some percentages so just to show how how like what's the percentage for each of these um, for each slice of the pie chart. To do that, it's very simple. We do that like this. So auto PST, a PCT, with this is auto percentage, and you give it the format. So in this case, my format is going to look like this, and I'll explain it to you when we run it. So let's actually close these two. Okay, so now you can see the format. Basically, I'm saying I want one point after the decimal with the percentage sign, and this is the numbers that we have. Now we can actually see the percentages on our chart. All right, we've created the first three charts. Let's go ahead and create the last two. So the next chart is going to be the line chart. Again, we do the subplots. This time we just say ax4.plot. So to create a line chart, you just use the plot. And then we convert the sales year data keys into a list and the values into a list. So going back here, let me show you. This is the sales year data. So you have 2018, what the value is, 2019, and so on. This is going to be a line chart. Just add the title, the label, the Y label, plt.show, and let's run it. So you should be familiar with this by now. Let's close these three and now you can see we have a line chart that says sales by year. This is our fourth chart. All right, we just have one more. So let's add and create the final one. So we do this. This is going to be area chart of inventory by month. So going back here, you can see this is our inventory month uh, data. And now what we do is we do the following. So same thing, subplots. This time we say ax5.fill underscore between. This is going to give us an area chart. Let me run it and actually explain what an area chart is. So closing these, this is our last one. So when we say fill between, basically we're saying that they should fill out this data. This is what helps us give this area chart look. So by filling up the colors under the line, now we have this area chart and it has all of our data. So we have the month, the inventory, and for each month, we're checking the value of the inventory. Okay, so we have created all five charts. The next thing we want to do is to see how we can add them into Tkinter and create the dashboard. The first thing we're going to do is to actually comment out all these plt.show functions. The reason is we no longer want the charts to pop up as their own window as they were showing up before. So before we had five separate windows, they were each chart was showing up in a separate window. We don't want that anymore. So I just comment out all of these plt.show. You can leave them, but then you're still going to have these windows even as you create your tkinter dashboard. The first step for adding tkinter into our application is to actually add the respective imports. 
First thing, we're going to import tkinter as tk. Next, we're going to import matplotlib.backends.backend underscore tk agg import figure, ca figure canvas tk agg. So what this is, is basically this is what will allow us to embed the matplotlib charts into a tkinter canvas. It's a special type of canvas that we're going to use in tkinter. And then this will contain our figure that was generated here when we did the plt.subplots. This will contain our figure and will embed it inside our tkinter UI. All right, so we have imported everything. Let's start by actually creating our dashboard and adding all the charts to it. To create the dashboard, this is going to be our very first piece of code. First things first, you create the window. So here root is going to be equal to tk.tk. .tk. This creates the root window of our tkinter application. The way tkinter works is that the widgets are in a hierarchy. There is one big root, in this case this is your main window, and everything else is contained inside it. So if we look here at our reference image, you can see that, sorry, okay. So you can see that this is our window. So this is going to be our root window in tkinter and everything else is going to be embedded inside of it. So to create this root window, simply we just say tk.tk. .tk. Then we give it a title of dashboard. This means the title here of the window is going to be dashboard the same way VS Code chose VS Code and things like that. So root.title will be dashboard. Next, we say root.state, it's going to be zoomed. So when we say zoom, this means it will be maximized and it will take up the entire screen. The reason is our dashboard is pretty big. We have five different charts. So we actually want it to take up as much screen space as possible. All right, so we have these. The last thing we need to do is say root.main loop. This is going to be the event loop of tkinter. What this means is that so long as your app is running, this main loop or this infinite loop will be running as well. This is what we call an event loop and without it, you would not be able to see anything in your application. Now running this to see what we have now, as you can see, we have an empty window since we haven't really added any of the charts to it yet. It's titled dashboard and it's zoomed, so it's totally maximized, taking up the entire screen, and it is totally empty. Now, before we add it into tkinter, what we want to do is to create a frame that's going to house our charts. The reason is, it's going to help us to better organize and position these charts the way we want. So in tkinter, positioning can be a little tricky. So when I say positioning, this means how do I place these charts in my screen? How do I allow them to take up this much space? Or how do I make sure that this one here is on the top left, this one is in the top middle, and this one is on the top right? How do I position this? In tkinter, we have something called geometry managers. Now, I'm not going to go into too much depth about geometry managers here and the different things you can do with them. But basically, what we are going to do is to create a frame. So the frame in this case is going to be like this. It will house our first three charts. OK, so this is supposed to be a square. Just forgive me. and I'm just drawing this very quickly. But basically, this is going to be our first frame and it's going to contain our first three charts. This is going to allow us to separate the two parts of our dashboard and put different charts in each part. So we created the frame. To create it, it's very easy. We just call it upper frame. So we're going to have upper frame and lower frame. The reason is one of them is obviously at the top and the other one is at the bottom. So the parent of the tk.frame object is going to be root. Like I said before, in tkinter, widgets exist in a hierarchy, so they are nested inside of each other. So root is our biggest window, it's the biggest widget, and inside of it, I'm going to have the upper frame. So I have to specify that root is the parent of upper frame. And now in tkinter, anytime you want to add a widget to a screen, you need to perform two steps. First, you need to create it like we did here. The second step is you need to position it using a geometry manager. So we just say upper frame dot pack, so pack is one geometry manager and we just say fill equal both expand equal true. So fill equal both means fill both the X and the Y axis, take up as much space as possible and expand is true. So that means our widget can actually expand. We've created the frame. Let's start by adding the charts into the frame. The first chart is the bar chart. So here, this is figure one. So figure one, if you go back here, you can see figure one is equal to the bar chart. So what I do is I create this figure canvas TK AGG object, and then I specify that the figure that's going to be in this figure canvas is going to be figure one. And then I say the parent of this widget, in this case, this canvas, is going to be the upper frame. So remember how I was saying they're nested? 
you have root, it's the biggest widget, then you have frame inside of root, as you can see here, and then you have the first canvas, which is this figure inside of the frame. So the parent is the upper frame. Next thing you need to do is you need to call canvas.draw. Similar to how before we were saying plt.show to actually show the figure, you need to call canvas.draw so that we can actually see it. And finally, we do the following. So we say canvas1.getTK widget. This will return the tkinter widget associated with this canvas. So here, this is an actual tkinter object that's being returned by this function. Then I can call the dot pack Oh, okay, oops. So then I can call the dot pack on it. You can see here I have the upper frame dot pack. Very similar. I have a tkinter widget and I call dot pack. And I do the same thing. I fill up both the x and the y axis. I expand equal true. And I say I want to pack this on the left side. Means place it on the left side. Let's actually run and see what we have so far in our project. And as you can see, we have the first chart taking up the entire space. This is because we don't have any other charts yet. And basically, this is how our, da how our dashboard looks like for now. Now, let's add the second chart. To add the second chart, it's the exact same three lines of code. First thing, we specify canvas2. It's equal to a, to a figure canvas, and the figure will be figure2, and the parent will be upper frame. We also call canvas.draw to make sure it appears on the screen. Then we pack our canvas, so we call the get TK widget, and then we pack the canvas also on the side left. So this will be to the, like, so the first one is on the side left, and then this one will be after it on the side left as well. And then we expand both the X and Y axis, and we expand true. So now running it, you can see we have two different charts and they are taking up equal amounts of space inside our dashboard. All right, so we have the first two charts. Let's go ahead and add the pie chart, which was our third chart. So the very, like the very exact same thing. In this case, it's canvas three and we're using figure three, but the lines of code are the exact same. So let's run it. And now you can see we have our pie chart right here as well. So we have the first three charts in our dashboard. They filled up our upper frame, which is this frame right here. What we're going to do next is we're going to create the lower frame that's going to house our two different charts here. Okay, so let's stop this and create the lower frame. So we create the lower frame as follows. It will be the same process as upper frame. It will be tk.frame parent is root, fill both and expand equal true. And then I create canvas four. This will be associated with figure four and it will be, we just call the same things, canvas four dot draw, we pack it, same thing. And then we do the same for canvas five. So it's the exact same three lines of code we did for each chart. All you need to do is you need to create a figure canvas, you need to draw it, and then you need to get the TK, the TK enter widget and actually pack it to your screen. So running this now, Let's see what we have. And as you can see, we have all five charts inside our dashboard on our screen. The very last thing I want to do is to add this sidebar that you saw at the start of the video to our dashboard. Now this part is pretty easy, but before I do that, one thing I want to change, let's go back here and take a look at our image. So you saw how before we divided this into two frames, the upper frame and the lower frame. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to combine these two frames, the upper frame and the lower frame, into one larger frame. So let's I'll change the color. And this frame is going to be here and it will contain both the upper and the lower frame as well. And then I will add a side frame to the left. So this will enable me to separate my dashboard from the sidebar. Okay, so how do I create this frame and how do I move these into it? So to create the frame, let's actually call it charts frame. This will be again a TK dot frame. The parent will be root and we just have to pack. So this is still straightforward. It's the same thing we were doing before. Now, what I want to do is I want to change the parent of upper frame and lower frame to in fact be charts frame. So you can see here, I just changed the parent for both upper frame and lower frame to put them inside the chart frame. Okay, so now these two smaller frames are inside the charts frame. So we can go ahead and create another frame on the left side. So to create that one, we're just going to call it side frame. It will be equal to tk.frame, parent will be root. This time we will specify a background color. So this will be another purple color to match the rest of our dashboard. And this will be the background color. So of course we have to pack it. We say the side is equal to left and we say fill equal Y to take up as much space on the Y axis as possible. So 
we've added the frame. Now, if we try to run it, okay, so we have an indent adder. Okay, running it now, as you can see, it's still the same. So we have no changes. You can't even see the frame. Maybe you can see just a bit of purple right here. It's a very small line. But the reason is in Tkinter, they don't assign sizes to frames unless there's something inside of it. So now the size of this frame is zero. Therefore, it's very tiny. You can't even see it. Now to actually see this frame, we need to add something to it. In this case, we're going to add a label and this will contain the title of our dashboard. To create the label, it's very simple. So we just say label equal tk dot label. It will be inside side frame. So the parent will be side frame. The text is just going to say dashboard. It will also have a purple background, a white foreground. This means the font color will be white and the font will be equal to 25 in size. Now I just have to pack it. I choose to give it some padding pad y equal 50 and pad x equal 20. Now running it to see what this looks like. As you can see, we now have our sidebar. It says dashboard as a title and all of our charts are on this side, separated from the sidebar, which is what we want. The very last thing I want to do is if you take a look here at this pie chart, you can see the title product breakdown is kind of cut off. This is due to the screen sizing. So just to fix this, I'm going to separate product and breakdown and put them on two different lines. So to do that, I just scroll back up. So here we have chart three, which is the pie chart. And I just add this backslash N just to place breakdown on a new line. Let's run it again. And as you can see now, it's much more clear. It's much more visible. You can see product breakdown are on separate lines. So this is our final result. This is our dashboard that we built with Tkinter. So let's say we are a shop. We're managing sales and inventory and different things related to products. So this can actually really help us. We can have this dashboard as a software at our shop and we can use it in our work. So feel free to expand on this project, maybe add different charts, maybe add different pages with other kinds of elements, visualize the tables. This is a great project to add to your resume. It shows initiative and it shows that you have created something different using the popular Python tools. All right, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.